Why was Einstein's brain stolen after his death? On April 17, 1955, Albert Einstein. Einstein was admitted to the hospital with pain. He didn't realize it at the time, but the largest vessel in his body, the part of the aorta where it descends into his abdomen had swollen and ruptured, and he was suffering from an internal bleeding and abdominal aortic aneurysm. At the time, he was busy preparing a speech to be read on television to celebrate Israel's seven-year anniversary. His doctors wanted to take him into surgery immediately, but Einstein, who had been operated on for the same reason eight years earlier, now realized that his legacy had already happened. I'll die when you want me to die when you want me to die. There's no point in artificially prolonging life. I've done my part. It's time for me to go. I'm going to go that way, and I'm really going to try to pipe the plans. Those of you who have watched Chaos suck this. They know the name of the hospital. In fact, the hospital shown in the series. Nothing to do with it, but the writers of the show probably chose that name on purpose. What's really interesting is that Einstein... Who stole Einstein's brain? During the autopsy of Einstein's brain, Thomas Harvey, the pathologist who performed the autopsy, just seven hours after the genius's death, without the permission of Einstein's family cut his brain out of his body and injected it with 10% formalin and froze it. To study this brain, which he believes to be unique, to find out what makes it so smart. But Einstein hated the idolization of himself, so he wanted his body destroyed and his ashes scattered secretly. I mean, Harvey never violated Einstein's will, not only as a gift to Henry Abramsa, Einstein's ophthalmologist, Einstein's son Hamza, when the doctor realized he was going to get burned to convince him of the importance of what he's doing and to get retroactive permission. Thus, he was able to avoid legal liability, but Hansen had one condition. His father's brain would only be analyzed and analyzed for. Harvey promised that the results would be published in reputable academic journals and that he would publish his findings within a year at the latest. And indeed, Einstein's brain has since been the subject of multiple studies. What do you think researchers have found that traces of this great genius? Let's take a look and see if we can find it. Did Einstein get bad grades? The most common mix about Einstein is that, although he was so smart, the claim that their grades are as bad as all of ours is why people believe it. It's not hard to see that even Einstein was treated like an idiot at school. And we can be like Einstein in the future. And that's partly what makes Einstein Einstein. You can be like him or even better than him, but to be successful, first and foremost, you need to stop lying to yourself if you want. Of course, school grades alone are important enough to determine the future. But it doesn't change the fact that Einstein's grades were very good. Doesn't change. How do we know that? Was Einstein's high school report card bad? For example, this is the report card he received in his senior year of high school on September 30th, 1896. Like in Switzerland at the end of the 1800s, the highest grade was 6 and the lowest was 1. If you look carefully, you can see that he got 6 in courses such as algebra, geometry, physics, and history chemistry, natural history, and German language and literature, drawing, and... You can see that he got a four in geography and the lowest grade was in French language, and... Three in literature is not bad, and Einstein only did well in high school. It wasn't Einstein's mother, Paula Einstein, when Einstein first started school. He writes a letter to his sister and says, Yesterday Albert got his report card. Again, he is at the top of his class, and his report card is excellent, so Einstein has been at the top of his class throughout his school life. He was a very successful student, of course. The teacher who told Einstein, you're nothing. Like every student, Einstein also had his disagreements with his teachers, for example. In middle school, a teacher at the then-named Lucky Poldu Sinasium wished Einstein. He said if he hadn't been my student. But the justification, it wasn't that Einstein was lazy. Her husband, who sat in the back row and often smiled at her stories. He felt that Einstein didn't respect him and therefore, and at one point he was angry that you'd never amount to anything. We can't judge a person's whole school life based on anecdotes. You have to look at his achievements and grades. And when we do that, we find that Einstein, confusion in the report card system that you are not a failing student. And then as I said, why do people keep spreading this nonsense? Einstein was also treated as an idiot by the education system. There is something comforting about believing, yes, and Einstein, like many of us, hate the militaristic tone of the schools and the systematic approach to education. He wrote again and again in his letters that it was going on, but this is not from the boat either. Another potential source for the claim that Einstein's grades were bad was the grading system used in Switzerland. Einstein died in Germany on March 14, 1879. He was born in the Reich and studied there until high school in Germany's school system.
In contrast, Switzerland has one highest grade and six lowest grades. Therefore, their report cards before they started studying in Switzerland were always together, so it was filled with the highest grade. But many people confused it with the Swiss system. They think it's the lowest grade, another thing that complicates things even more. At that point, Einstein attended high school in Switzerland until 1896. The fact that he followed the German grading system until his senior year, but then his grades... In other words, that year they had already switched to the system they used in the report card I just showed you. And they started using six as the highest grade and one as the lowest grade. But it's not clear from his family's letters. We can see from other records that Einstein's grades were always good. Or very good. So, do you think it's possible that Einstein's grades were so good? What do you think was the reason for his genius that would later shine? Could it be in your brain? That's a question that has fascinated scientists for decades. What is the difference between Einstein's brain? The question is not only Einstein, but geniuses in general. Do you think we can specifically identify these geniuses in this way? Or they're born because they're too obsessed with a certain subject? Are there certain areas of their brains that are extra? Developing. Can we distinguish that? Here's the pathologist's Harveyan maybe on top of it at all, and the magnitude of the genius and mystery that lies before him. And thanks to his hasty decision, he was able to find some clues. Harvey Einstein's brain after he removed it. And then, together with his mentor, Harry Ziver, he photographed into 240 pieces, each roughly 10 cubic centimeters in size. In 1925, he prepared microscope slides of these brain sections. It was determined according to the Atlas of the Cerebral Cortex published by Koskinos. And it largely followed the brain region determined by Broadwoman in the 19th century. That is, the sections were selected to correspond to groups of the brain with specific functions. But the problem is that neither Harvey nor his mentor, Zemherman, had any expertise in neuroscience and the brain. Both were pathologists. The brain that couldn't be studied for 30 years after his death. And at most, they were able to distinguish specific pathological conditions such as brain injury or hemorrhages, so they lacked the equipment to illuminate the secrets of the extraordinary brain they had. For this reason, Harvey was never able to keep his promise to Hans Einstein that he would publish within a year because he could not identify anything that he could publish because he did not know what to look for, and this soon turned into a big problem, even though he had permission from Hans. The chief physician of his hospital decided that this was not enough to forgive him for what he had done, and he was forced to resign a few days after the incident on the grounds that he had violated the code of ethics. Unable to find New Jersey for a long time, he emigrated with his two large jars containing Einstein's brain to the Midwestern United States, where he began working as a general practitioner. Harvey was quite eccentric, even described as a dreamer, and for this reason no academics took him seriously. For 30 years after Einstein's death, he was unable to convince anyone to study Einstein's brain. Finally, he traveled across the United States to give the brain to Einstein's grandson, who lived in California, but the grandson refused to take it. So Einstein's brain became a curse. After all these events and after going back and forth with the brain for a long time, he finally returned to where he started and handed over the jars containing the brain fragments to the pathologist who was hired in his position and his 40-year adventure came to an end from that point on, researchers started to show a little more information about Einstein's brain. Published in one exactly 44 years after Einstein's death, Einstein's brain was analyzed from his remains and original photographs, and the findings so far are quite interesting. First of all, Einstein's brain is not larger than average. On the contrary, it is quite small. A man of Einstein's age and weight at the time of his death should have a brain of around 1,400 grams, whereas Einstein's brain is around 1,400 grams. It was only 1 to 30 grams.